today we are highly learning about Bitcoin nodes and the importance of, <laughs> importance of data, financial, and body sovereignty. Where do we start? My main thing with this stuff is like, I don't want to be an educator and I don't want to be viewed as an expert. I want to be viewed as a critical thinking boss. What I like to share is my experience of what I'm learning and what I'm doing. And if there's anything that you guys can pull from it, then you do. But like as an educator or a teacher, no. I'll be the explorer, I'll explore these waters and I'll come back and tell you what I think works for me and are things that you guys should look into in order to elevate your human game. So I bought everything I need to set up a complete Bitcoin full node and we're gonna put it together from parts. I put this case on my SSD already. This is a thousand gigabytes, crucial um, SSD. And then I've got a 64 micro SD. And then I've got the Raspberry Pi. I'm so excited. I've got, what is this piece? The card reader. And then I've got the little Raspberry Pi case. A little power supply. Look at this mini fan. Like after building my like, <laughs> after building my giant gaming PC, like this stuff makes me so excited. <laughs> this is the power cable. And then I've got some USB connectors. That's for my, between my SSD and my Raspberry Pi. And I have an ethernet cable too, that's important. This SD, I believe is gonna go uh, USB-C to USB-C on the um, Raspberry Pi. Okay, that was easy. <laughs> Open here. Oh. <laughs> Oh, wow, it's almost like it was made to open that way. Oh my god, this is so cute. Kawaii. <laughs> Guys, check it out. Ah, that's so cool. You guys don't think this is cute? Come on, stop. You think it's cute? Safety guide. Ha. Safety schmafety. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's four USBs, I guess. An ethernet and then a micro USB that's gonna go to our SSD and then we got as this my mini HD two mini HDMI's does that mean I could run this to two monitors oh my god it's so cute oh my god look at the little city I've got all the pieces laid out in front of me now I'm just gonna guess what happens first and briefly review the quick start guide. The case, the case is really cute too. I got the white one. I literally paid extra for the white one. It was an extra $20. Look at how cute it is. Look at my mini computer. It's that baby. It's a little baby. Do I have a cooler for the CPU? Is this a cooler for the CPU? Oh, it just sits. It just sits, it just fits. It just slides under these two pieces. You didn't know I was into crypto? I've had Bitcoin since 2015. And it, I'm five years into Bitcoin and I'm finally building myself a Bitcoin node. Here we go. If you would like to use it for high performance applications, you may add the cooling fan to, if your case supports it. Yes, it does. In this case, connect the red and black wires. Ooh, it tells me right here. To the GPIO pins. Oh, perfect. I was figured I was going to connect it to the GPIO. In this case, connect the red wire to pin one. Oh, for a quiet operation. That's so cool. Oh my God. So just based on where I plug these in, it's going to be quiet. I'm going to, I want quiet. Okay. I don't want, I don't want to be woken up at night from my GP. I mean, from my Bitcoin node. Okay. So we're going to put it on one and six. Ta-da. Fan installed. You guys seeing this? This is so cute. It's cute. No, you don't mind Bitcoin on this. What this does is it adds another node to the Bitcoin network, which improves the decentralization of Bitcoin. Um, and you can also verify all of your own transactions this way. And you can verify the Bitcoin uh, blockchain as a whole. This is a Pi 4. 
Eight gigabyte RAM. Here's the little micro SD slot. This looks like this is where you'd put it, so I put it. I can take it out and put it in at any time. That's nice. And I think the Raspberry Pi OS works with Umbral. I'm using the Umbral guide. Download Umbrella OS. Okay, we downloaded that. Step three, download Elena Etcher. Flash the Umbral OS file that you downloaded onto the micro SD card. Good thing we can just reformat this, you know? Okay, pop this baby in. Okay, quick formatting it, got it. Format complete. Okay. So the up flash from file, Umbral OS, select target, storage device, flash. Yes. Oh, sorry, I should be showing this. Gameplay. <laughs> Flashing. Ooh. Turn a U Raspberry Pi into an AirPlay server to enable screens mirroring. Oh, that's why I'm doing this. That's cool. Wait, I don't have that yet. That's the next one. Wow, okay, okay. So the reason why Umbral is cool, it allows me access to all of these apps now too. Um, okay, so once we have the SSD in here and then look at this, this thing is so cute. It just mounts. I mean, I guess we can just start mounting all this stuff, right? Ooh, so easy. And then we can mount my new little, my little fan. So we want to pull air out. You want it to spin to the left, I believe. So it goes, all, it all go counterclockwise. So I'll put it, I'll mount it like this. We're doing great. This is so easy. Slides in. There we go. Fan is ready. Zoop de doops. We got it on low fan speed, but if I ever want to turn it up to high fan speed, I just need to move this to the second prong. Once all the connections have been made, connect your USB-C power adapter to the board. When the power adapter is connected, Raspberry Pi will start to boot. I'll close it now. There you go. Are you guys happy? Look at that. So we've got the USB cord. This is gonna plug into the one closest to the po USB power, perfect. Okay. Got it, micro SD is in. Connect the SSD card into any of the two 3.0 slots. Okay, open the bottom one. Okay, I'm plugging it in. Got it. Oh my God, look at my little node. We're using a Raspberry Pi to set up a Bitcoin node. To support the Bitcoin network and to take one step more into my financial sovereignty. Yay! <laughs> so then we got the ethernet, we're plugging that in. Ethernet's in, SSD's in. I don't even need a monitor and a keyboard because after five minutes, it's gonna be accessible on my network. Okay, let me go plug this into the router. That was so easy. What the hell? So it further decentralizes the Bitcoin network. It allows me to verify um, the blockchain myself and any transaction that I have too. So I'm excited. And then now also I get to have access to um, a bunch of decentralized apps. Umbrals in beta should not be considered secure. I should not put more funds on my umbral that I'm prepared to lose. So this is also a wallet. That's cool. Now it's going to sync and I've got access to my Bitcoin, the Lightning Network and all the apps. That's so exciting. The first app I'm seeing on, um, what's it called? On the umbral is Photo Prism. So you can self host your photo and video library. I love that. Oh, you guys were talking about Pi Hole. So I can put Pi Hole on my Raspberry Pi now. Home Assistant. So like this to me <laughs> is like kind of saving the panic that I had recently by having this Raspberry Pi Lightning Network node. 
because now I get to claim sovereignty over my home automation, over my photo hosting, like over all these things. Like, cause we just gave everything up to Amazon and to Apple. And it's just like kind of my boy <laughs> when you deeply think about it. Oh, this is what I want. Chat and pay over the lightning network. I'm gonna install Sphinx. This photo prism sounds cool. I've had Bitcoin since I was it, since 2015, but it wasn't until last summer that I bought more and I took this seriously and I actually took steps to understand what blockchain was, what smart contracts are, what Oracle networks are, what different DeFi programs there are, what's a stable coin, etc. And the implications of this are really interesting. Like decentralized autonomous organizations are made possible through this. Um, NFTs are huge, that's a non-fungible token. Um, and this is all the beginning of this decentralization process that's happening. And it keeps us in control of our data, which is just a really beautiful, phenomenal thing. Every time we have more people add more nodes, it creates like that one comment I think is really underrated. If someone wanted to take over this, they would have to take over 50% of the Bitcoin nodes. And you want to have one node per household. You don't need a bunch of nodes in one household either. So these are the things that I'm interested in. And I thought I would share it with you guys because I thought you might be interested in it.